A riveting Daytona 500 this weekend. Millions watched as Ricky Stenhouse Jr. won in double overtime. What fans might not have realized is the trophy he held high was made in Omaha and has been for years by an incredible sculptor who's positively the heartland. So when did your relationship with NASCAR start? Oh, yeah. Here, let, can I sit down? Turns out it's a story worth sitting for and goes through Shalimar, Florida. So I did a sculpture of Bob Hope. So he had a, a show for the unveiling. And he had uh, Phyllis Diller there. And he had Reba McIntyre. And he had the Miss America at the time. <laughs> You know, and here I am, you know. The family behind NASCAR was also at Bob Hope Village that day. They connected with John Liba. Back in 1995, NASCAR asked me, I said, John, I was wondering if you could design a permanent Harley J. Earl trophy. And so what I did, I'll show you this first. Um, so I, uh, the Firebird was a rocket, rocket car. And this is uh, made out of balsa wood and Bondo. And its tail broke off because my son painted it and made it like a rocket ship. We'll pause so NASCAR fans catch their breath. John's prototype of the most coveted award a driver can earn was used as a toy. These days, creating the trophy is a pursuit unto its own. Taking diamond files and emery cloth and making it perfect. Mm -hmm. And it, it takes about six months to do the trophy. John makes two each year, one for the driver, one for the owner. He's also behind the Daytona 200 trophy. He'll be attached like right here somewhere, and I have to protect the base before I attach him. And I want him to look like he's just flying down a track. Is that the one? Yeah, this is the one. I've got to finish it. For, for not for this March? Yeah, this March. That's coming up, isn't it? Uh-oh. He'll be ready. John takes the trust invested in him to heart. I have to be the last person, and it's all my responsibility to make sure it's perfect. The College World Series MVP trophy, that's John. He sculpted something else even more recognizable. My wife and I like to go to the College World Series games, and we go there, and I don't, well, I kind of spy a little bit, you know, I'm, I'm up there, and I, I see people interacting with my sculpture, and they really don't know who I am, but the point is, they're making that sculpture part of their life. Like at the Durham, where every piece is unique. All the ones at the Durham Museum are one-offs because they're made out of a waste mold and I have to destroy the mold to get the epoxy out of the mold. You know, And that's the same one I have to do with this. It's an abstract idea of a miracle of uh, turning uh, five bread loaves and two fish and, to, and a miracle to feed thousands. It's actually going to go uh, St. Clemkill uh, Parish. John sculpted a triptych during our visit. I'll take one of my favorite tools as my fingernail and uh, you know, just kind of work it in. You know, I kind of like that. Once a chemistry major, he left to study art at Bellevue and Creighton Universities. John insists he hasn't worked in decades. Uh, I was a dishwasher at the Ranch Bowl and then I worked in the mail room at Mutual of Omaha and then than nothing since 1982. He makes it look easy, a process that's free from the start. I like to approach my work initially with not having any answers. It's, it's fun to discover stuff. Isn't it fun to learn things? His wholesome nature engenders trust and allows John to mold, like clay, valuable relationships near and far. So I guess that that's just a personal satisfaction uh, that uh, you know, developing relationships and having perhaps enriching people's lives in some way. John's next work to debut locally is his piece for St. Columkill and Papillion, which will be ready this spring and they're anxious to have it. On his wish list, Malcolm X, perhaps for the Nebraska Hall of Fame, John also sculpted architect Thomas Kimball for the hall.